Okay, this should be the last screencast for Investigation 9A, and we are right here. We've answered question 5, and we're talking about the last little bit so we can answer the last couple of questions. Okay, it says that the polar front marks the lower atmosphere boundary between higher latitude cold air and lower latitude warm air. This temperature contrast extends from the Earth's surface up to the altitude of the polar front jet stream. Okay, so we have warm air sitting next to cold air. As demonstrated in Investigation 5B, that's the one we did for bell work the other day, the effect of temperature on air density means that the air pressure at any given altitude above the surface <coughs> is higher in the warm air column than in the cold air column. Um, hence, there is a horizontal pressure gradient a horizontal pressure gradient is directed across the front from the warm side to the cold side. Okay. In response, the horizontal wind initially blows from warm air towards cold air, but is soon deflected to the right by the Coriolis effect. Okay, remember we do have the Earth rotating, or we would get these winds going straight from warm air to cold air. Okay, let me show you what I mean. This is our zonal map from earlier and there is a boundary line right here that separates warm air from colder air. So down here You have warm air. Up here, okay, up there is colder air. Where's my blue marker? There it is. Okay. So we've got a boundary. This is that polar front that they're talking about that marks the lower atmosphere boundary between high latitude cold air and low latitude warm air. Okay. We also see it on the meridional image that they gave us. Okay. And again, warm air is down here. Makes sense because it's closer to the equator. And your colder air is up here, closer to the poles. Alright, now I'm going to go back and reread one thing to make you guys hopefully understand what they're talking about. Okay, where it says, hence a horizontal pressure gradient is directed across the front from the warm side to the cold side. Remember, this is our polar front. Warm air is here, cold air is here. We've got higher pressure here at a certain altitude than we have over here. And so the winds are going to attempt to go from warm to cold. <coughs> but the problem is the Earth is spinning, and so these quickly get deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere. That's why they wind up flowing this way. Okay, Even if it starts to blow from warm to cold, it's going to get turned to the right. And that's why they wind up flowing along that boundary rather than across it, really.
Okay, you have the same thing on the zonal map. If the Earth wasn't spinning and everything else was the same, then we would have warm air being able to move directly towards the cold air, but it gets deflected, turned to the right, and so we wind up flowing along that boundary. Okay. Alright, so now I'm back to reading a little bit more. Um, down here, it says, Consequently, the wind blows parallel to the polar front, while the cold air to the left, with the cold air to the left, when facing in direction uh, towards which the wind is blowing. Furthermore, where cold and warm air reside side by side, the magnitude of the horizontal pressure gradient increases with altitude. We saw that when we did the exercise 5B. Y'all know that the pressure differences got bigger and bigger as we went up in altitude. So the magnitude of the horizontal pressure gradient increases with altitude, and this is going to cause, this causes the horizontal wind to strengthen with altitude and reach its maximum speed in the polar front jet stream. All right, then all we need to do, since we've done the background work, now all we need to do is answer questions six and seven. Number six, in the northern hemisphere, when the polar front jet stream is south of a locality, the weather at that location is relatively warm or cold. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter which map we use. We'll, we'll use this one. Let's say that you are at this location. The polar front jet stream is south of where you are. Okay, so if the polar front jet stream is south of where you are, you are in a cold location. Okay, if the polar front jet stream was north of where you were, you're in a warm location. Okay, but let's see, the question asks, when the polar front jet stream is south of a locality, the weather at that location is relatively cold. So you should select cold. As a component of the planetary scale upper air westerlies, and similar to the winds at 500 millibars, remember that's a pressure reading, the polar front jet stream steers low pressure systems. Hence, middle latitude storms generally move from west to east or east to west. Well, again, it doesn't matter which diagram I look at. I can look at the zonal one. I can look at the meridional one. But in both cases, the little arrows along my jet streams are flowing west to east. Now with a meridional, it's going to do a lot of wandering, but it still goes generally from west to east. Okay, zonal, same thing, not very much wandering this time, and it goes from west to east. So, answer to number seven, hence middle latitude storms generally move from west to east. And then where it starts with examine figure three, we're not going to do that part, so you can just scratch that out and you're done.